Hello new English student. This video will give you a very brief but not completely useless introduction to two of the 18th century authors you will encounter during your studies with Dr. Jane McGrath. Jane is a huge fan of the 18th century. Obviously. Okay, let's get started. Here we are in England's oldest library, found at Oxford University. Would you believe this library was built near the end of the medieval period? Truly remarkable it is. But I digress. Let's get down to business and see if we can find the work of any of our authors among its shelves. Ah yes, here we are. A collection of works by Alexander Pope. Pope is one of the most impressive English poets of all time. Pope frequently wrote his poems in iambic pentameter, and was famous for his use of the heroic couplet. Although we won't go into further details about these traditional forms for English poetry, suffice to say you should make yourself very familiar with these terms. Alexander Pope's most famous poem, The Rape of the Lock, is a mock epic, a form of satire. The 18th century was the golden age of satire, Satirical works use wit, irony, or sarcasm to shame society into self-reflection and improvement. On a personal level, Alexander Pope had many hardships. He was mostly self-taught because he was a Catholic during a time in which it wasn't very popular to be a Catholic. So he was largely excluded from the university and political systems. Pope never married and he suffered from a form of tuberculosis that settled in his spine, causing him great pain. However, Pope did form several lifelong friendships within London's literary world. One of those friends was Jonathan Swift. Swift is another 18th century author whose books grace library shelves around the world. Swift was born in Ireland, where he was well educated but he spent his life shuttling back and forth between Ireland and England. Like Pope, Swift was a satirist. Unlike Pope, Swift was better known for his prose than his poetry. In his essay, A Modest Proposal, Swift suggests those living in poverty might consider easing their financial struggles by selling their children as food for the rich. This is an example of social satire literature that is critical of social flaws. In this case, the heartless attitude of the rich toward those living in poverty. Another famous work by Swift, one that you have probably at least heard of, is Gulliver's Travels. It is a biting and often repulsive satire that is both humorous and critical of British and European society. Well, that's all the time we have today, folks. We think you'll be pleasantly surprised by what the 18th century has to offer you. It was a truly remarkable time for English literature.